Well, hello everybody. I hope you enjoyed my last video on Wednesday. Today's going to be a, a bit of an image critique, show you a, a little bit about what I did with a couple of the images. Right, let's start with the first image. If I, I don't really title my images, but um, if I had to give this one a title, it would be called Best of a Bad Situation, <laughs> which is ridiculous because the conditions were so good. Um, but in the video uh, on Wednesday, I mentioned that this was busy and, and you know, I, I was struggling to get a nice clean image here, a clean scene. I was struggling to find balance and harmony within the image. And we have a lot of elements that make a great image. We have interesting subjects, we have beautiful light. Um, but for me, composition isn't there. There's too many distractions. The main one for me, now, last week I talked about cheating on your images and how I'm okay with cloning stuff out. Now, don't let it be assumed that I'm good <laughs> at cheating with my images. Because you see this, um, this, there's like a little, little bush here in the corner here. That really bothers me so, so much. And actually did try and clone it out, and I couldn't. It just looked a mess. It, it just looked horrendous. It was clear and obvious that it had been removed. You know, it's like a big smudge there. So I had to leave that in, and that bothered me. Um, and and I don't. This would be better if the island sort of ended. You know, if this was the tip of the island, but it wasn't. It kind of went on for quite a while, and. What I was trying to do when framing this composition was align the two trees with the center of the mountain peak here and these boulders. You know, I wanted the boulders to go through the trees to the mountain. So your eye would go boulders through the trees, maybe around, have a little look at the trees and go up to the light on the mountain and a lovely sky. And then I dropped in a four stop filter in order to give me a five second exposure to smooth out the water. That was quite effective. But all in all, you know, I, uh, sorry, again, I've, I've square cropped the image to try and simplify it further and to get rid of all of the distractions and all of the mess, but all in all, it's just not quite there. I don't think this would ever win any competitions. I don't think it's good enough to hang on anybody's wall. I think it's a nice enough photograph, but it's not. It's, for me, it's neither here nor there. Now this photograph, on the other hand, this is one of those really frustrating situations in my career where I don't film. I pretty much film all of my photography stuff. When I'm out on location, I film 90% of it. This just so happened to be the 10% of the time I wasn't flipping while filming. And that's because all of this light, this light just happened in the valley. We've got snowy storm clouds up above here, um, sort of showering down. But we've got the light coming in from the side. There's light, sort of dappled sunlight all across the landscape and it just happened to hit these trees here. Nothing else, just this sort of plantation of trees. And that was perfect because you can see the foreground, you can see it's quite messy. I was talking about there wasn't enough snow to really clean up the landscape and this is an example. You can see all of the, uh, all of these rocks and boulders and all of, all of the, the bits of grass and the, and the vegetation coming through. But because all of the light is on the trees, and naturally in a photograph, your eye goes to the brightest part, and especially if that's in the center of the frame, then you're onto a winner. So this image is full of atmosphere, and the messy foreground can be forgiven because it's dark, it's in shadow, there's nothing there too distracting, and the trees and the light and the mountains in the background are enough to pull the eye past all of that mess. And on to what's important, which is this. Now, I love this photograph, I really do. Uh, definitely my favorite from the day, perhaps. And I wasn't even filming, can you believe it? Um, and it's the only image I have because that light kind of came and went so fast by the time I got my camera out, got the shot, and it had gone. So, same location that I photographed the earlier image, this one. But it was about three, or four hours later. And I went back to the same spot. And again, the light was the light was kicking off again. We had beautiful light all day. But the light's coming in from the side and it's casting on all of these mountains and hills here. And again, it's hitting the trees and not the foreground. Now, I must have taken 20 images. And I don't mean 20 images because it's a panel. Each panel is probably seven or eight images. So 20 panels, which is, well, a lot of individual frames. And it's because the light was so changeable. And I figured, you know, I'm just going to stay here for half an hour or an hour. And I'm going to keep my eye on the landscape and the light. I'm going to shoot. 
as the light changes and then I'll just pick the best one and that's exactly what I did and the reason that I chose this image above all the others is because of the even distribution of light on all of the areas that are interesting. We've already dis discussed with the last image that the foreground wasn't interesting, in fact it's quite distracting. Same goes for this, but we're okay because the foreground is in shade. So we've got beautiful soft light on the mountain on the left, the trees similar or the same as the last image but not the light isn't as harsh because we're very late afternoon now, this is getting towards sunset so it's a much softer, warmer light. Anyway, it's casting on the left mountain, right across the valley floor, over to these trees and then up to the right hand mountain here, but not the one in the background, that gives it depth. Um, and again, we still have this moody, snowy sky in the video. I think you could see it was snowing a little bit, the wind was blowing, it was cold, it was rah, but it was great. And it's those conditions that give you light like this. Okay, so one glaring and obvious thing about this image is it's not black and white. I think the reason that I didn't go for a black and white conversion with this image is because the light I was working with was so much softer, so much warmer, and the warm light contrasts with the dark, slate gray, almost blue, sort of dramatic clouds above, and I like, I like that combination. I really like the color balance, whereas the other image, middle of the day, really harsh, cold, cool light. There were no colors in this scene that I liked. Whereas this one, I really like the, the warm the warm tones on the mountains, the warm patch of the sky up here, but then the contrast with the cool blue here. Um, now, excuse me, in last week's video where I talked about manipulating, editing, cheating, if you want to call it that, with your images, um, I always move distractions. Now, I just want to give you an example of how many distractions I've taken away with this because as soon as I see a stray boulder or a stray rock or a bit of vegetation or a twig, I have to get rid of it. And once I start, it's very difficult for me to stop. So I'm just going to show you in the interest of openness and transparency what I've removed. So this is my final edited panorama. This one is, is before the clone removal tool. So you can see, and I suppose the main thing here is this, this rock right in the middle here. I found that so distracting. My eye just went to it like a dart to a bullseye. Um, so I got rid of that and then once I got rid of that I, I got rid of a few, I squint my eyes like this and anything that jumps out I get rid of. And I didn't go overboard but I certainly got rid of a few prominent um, distractions shall we say, just, just boulders, stuff that really got in the way of all the good stuff at the back. Um, and yeah, so this image I really like. Uh, to be honest actually it's a toss up between this one being my favourite and this one. I did say a few weeks ago that I wanted to shoot more panos this year and boy did we do that in Scotland. If you tune in next week and the week after and even the week after you'll see that, man, pano heaven. Oh, I suppose as well. Hang on, one second. So a few people mentioned my tripod because I was using a different tripod. There's nothing wrong with my original tripod, in fact I love it, but um, yeah, I was using this. This is a this is not an advert. Let's get that clear. Let's just respond in some of the comments uh, This is by a company called iFootage. This is a Gazelle T7. It's a tripod I'm not I'm not gonna say it's better than any other tripod out there. It's just a standard tripod, but It is different in the way and I think I talk about this in future Scotland videos, but it's this it's got a um, it's Got what's called a bowl head and essentially the tripod head sits in this bowl, so you see that? And what that means is uh, you don't have to level your tripod when shooting panels. You plonk your tripod down and this was really uneven ground. And then you don't level your tripod, you level your bowl head. Um, but there is one issue with it, and that is, I don't know if you can see, probably can't see, can you? Oh. There's a, a bubble, there's a little level bubble, there it is, a little level bubble on the ball head which tells you when it's level and you're ready to shoot your pano. But the problem is, if I was to put a full size tripod head on this, it would cover the bubble level, it would cover it. So then you can't see it, so you don't know if it's level. And of course you could level it and then put your tripod head on, but that's proper faff and I'm not going to do that. So I used a smaller tripod head, a cheap, really cheap small tripod head that doesn't cover the bubble. Problem is, 
it was a pain because it's not designed for the weight of my camera so it kept dropping and doing all sorts. So um, an almost perfect tripod. So I mentioned before, I alluded to the fact that it was Pano Heaven in Scotland. Bought myself a Pano frame, just a little one. And uh, because I shot so many Panos in Scotland, I think at the end of the series I'll choose one and print it and frame it. This is a contender, I have to say it's a contender, but I definitely shot some seriously good panels that, you know, it's a personal opinion, it's me, we're talking, you know, my opinion, but yeah. Lots of snowy panels, some, minimal, some minimalist, some a bit more dramatic like this. So yeah, really excited for what's to come over the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, apologies if this video is a bit all over the place, I just wanted to discuss a couple of points that I mentioned in my last video and, you know, a little critique of my own images there. So, as always, Thank you so much for watching and make sure you stay tuned next time for, what do we do next time? Ooh, a massive sunrise hike up a huge mountain and uh, yeah, really, really, it's a bounty of images, let's say. So until then, thanks for watching. Bye for now.